Hi, I'm Meg Medina, and I'm going to read to you a little piece from my novel, The Girl Who Could Silence the Wind. And in this scene, Sonia and her friend have taken a trip to the center of town, and they've decided to stop for an ice cream. And a friend of theirs from the house where they are working as servants um, stops by to see them. It was a group of schoolgirls that caught Sonia's attention in particular. Here in the capital, even people her own age looked special in a way that she'd never seen at home. No one wore dusty sandals or walked down bare feet. Their hair was combed and pinned their skin fresh. They looked regal, Sonia thought admiringly, in their pleated skirts and crisp white shirts, a red kerchief tied at their neck. They held books to their chest, shiny ones filled with new and exciting information, she imagined. How nice to be a girl on the way home for lunch that was prepared by someone else. How lovely not to be the one toiling over steaks and fried potatoes in a grand kitchen that wasn't her own. Oscar savored his ice loudly as Sonia watched the group of girls round the corner. You know, you remind me of my own granddaughter, he told her finally. I thought I reminded you of your granddaughter, Eva protested. You're shameless. Oscar smiled guiltily and pulled a picture from his wallet. This is Lara. He pointed to a girl who looked nothing at all like either one of them. She dreams of becoming a, do a doctor, he said proudly. Sonia studied the photograph. Lara looked to be about 15, and she had the bright eyes of hope. A doctor? That's good, Senor Oscar, Sonia said politely. She did not mention that intelligence meant nothing in Tres Montes, where almost no one finished school regardless of their talents. Oscar nodded, a born intellect just like her mother. He looked at Sonia and dabbed the cold syrup from his lips. But you have the high forehead of a bright child too. I see something special behind your eyes. Not at all, Senor Oscar, she replied quickly. I'm quite ordinary. I'm happy with dusting and fetching. Are you sure? He asked. There's not something else you might want to be? Sonia fell into a thoughtful silence. She only knew what she did not want to be. Not magic, not lonely, not trapped. But never once had she thought of what she did want never imagined a future the way Lara did. Don't strain yourself with thinking about that, amorcito, Eva told her. How many choices do you think there are for girls like us? Sonia just smiled at Oscar, who was still waiting patiently for her reply. I'm not sure what I'll be, senor. Maybe a teacher. The words sprang to her lips from the blue. She shrugged at Eva, who looked positively shocked. Well, you have to admit, ours at home is a disaster. 